Father and our God, we bow before you today, fully aware that we are prone to evil, but totally relying on you to create in us a clean heart, a spirit of humility, gratefulness, and everlasting worship to you, our God and sustainer. Amen. Today's devotion is Choose Wisely. Our verse of meditation is 2 Chronicles 22, verse 3. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor in doing wickedly. A puppy staying with a duck and her ducklings can believe all he wants that he is a duck, but he will never be able to fly. Christians claiming to be followers of Christ while refusing to obey the commandments of God are like this puppy. Remember, a day of reckoning will come. Have you noticed that street signs don't give you options? They just say wrong way, left turns only, no stopping, drive on the right, dead end ahead, etc. They call for obedience, not compromise or rationalizing. If we disobey them, the result can be disastrous for us and sadly for those in our presence. If man's rules are so absolute, and mark you, they are all given for our protection, how much more should the rules of an unchanging God be absolute? And certainly, God's intention to safeguard and protect us is much purer than the motive of planners when they create road rules and signs. Choose your path wisely. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he assumed the leadership of Jerusalem. He had a long history of rulers in his family, and they all disobeyed God and did wickedly. He somehow, though, felt that he needed guidance, and he turned to his mother. But she, Athaliah, was evil, and so the counsels he received were all evil. She was a worshiper of Baal and wanted nothing to do with the God of heaven. As such, her decisions were all about self. And since self can be easily contaminated, She was an agent of the devil, and she led her son down the same path. Not too long after Ahaziah became king, he was killed in a battle with Jehu. One would think that this mother would be heartbroken, but she seized the moment to take power for herself in a most cruel way. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 10 says, Now when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. This evil woman not only led her son astray, she destroyed all her grandchildren to ensure that she would be the only one able to take the throne. This is an unthinkable act for any person, much less one who shares in the joy of motherhood. In the midst of this evil, another mother stepped in. She was Jehoshabeth, the sister of Athaliel. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 11 reads, But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash the son of Ahaziah and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered, and she put him in a nurse in her bedroom. As soon as the lad was old enough to take the throne, the priest and the people brought him out and presented him to the happy nation who officially crowned him as king. In this story, we see two women pitched against each other in character, and purpose. One wanted the throne at all costs. She schemed, murdered to get to the throne, the place of homage. The other put her life in danger to protect the rightful heir to the throne. Bad mother Eva Athalia was dethroned and put to death. 
and good mother Jehoshaphat risked her life to save baby Joash, and no doubt she was rewarded. A wonderful lesson on the heart of a real mother who chose wisely. But these stories are not meant to be just taken at face value. They are meant to give deep understanding to the people of God as we head into what the Bible describes a time of trouble such as never was seen. In this story, a child is in danger. Let's move to Revelation 12 verse 4. The scripture tells of a child facing a dragon. This dragon was a dragon whose tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. So we know that this is Satan. The dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. The child here is Jesus Christ because verse 5 says the son will rule all the nations with an iron scepter and so does Psalm 2 verse 9. And the woman here refers to the Old Testament Israel which is the nation through which the Messiah came. Since Galatians 3 verse 28 tells us there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. We know then that old Israel morphed into the church of Christ. So Revelation 12 verse 17 when it tells us the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offsprings, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus is speaking about the modern church. This rage is now directed at the church, but it is the church who, like Jehoshaphat, seeks to protect the child, the rightful heir of the throne. It seems that God told the prophecy of Revelation from the Old Testament. The real lesson to us is, if you're on the right track, you should be under attack. Imagine this. Some of us will be claiming to be under attack from the enemy, when in truth, we're members of Satan's army. I know that sounds crazy, but it can happen. In fact, I dare say, it is happening. We have systems that reduce God's words and commandments to convenience, tradition, or popularity. We get caught up in a gospel of wealth, glitz, glamour, and politics, and then we dare to talk about being under Satan's attack. The time is coming, brothers and sisters, where we cannot claim ignorance. We must choose. Athaliah wanted power, just like Satan wants worship, and she was prepared to kill all the children to get it, just like the devil. Jehoshaphat, on the other hand, wanted to preserve the child and was willing to risk her life to do so. And we can draw two parallels here. There is a pure church that is willing to protect the laws of God, to protect the pure, unadulterated words of God. And our members are willing to risk their life for that sake. And there is Jesus who intends to preserve the true worshipers and has already given his life to protect them. So the choices are before us. Choose wisely. But the exciting part of this is that we will see the coronation of the king. Just as the people in Jehoshaphat day saw the coronation of Joash at the appropriate time. Second Chronicles 23 verse 11 tells us, And they brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him the testimony, and made him king. Then Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, Long live the king. And we say, Amen and Amen.